Hello everyone, this is Roshul and welcome to Love Ribbon. This is a visual novel. And... Yeah. That's all I know about the game so far. I do like the artwork, which is probably the main reason why I actually um, went for this game. And yeah, any good artwork is a great visual novel for me. Listen, I don't, I mean, don't need much to impress me. And of course, good music. Oh, right, starting the game. I did that unconsciously. I stretch my arms out wide as I take my first step off the bus. My body is stiff after being seated for what feels like half the day, and various joints crack in response to my movement. At the same time, I fill my lungs with fresh air. After being trapped inside of a bus all day, the air outside has a refreshing taste to it. Mmm, crack, ouch. Oh, jeez, it's only been a few hours. Stuffing up, Iris. With a loud crack of my neck, I finish limbering up and hit the road. I keep an eye out for any street signs that might help me gather my bearings. While I have a rough idea of where I am, I've never been to this city before, nor am I traveling with anybody who might. I'm all alone in a brand new city, my home for at least the next year. I see. Ah, <sighs> this is hopeless. I can't see anything helpful. Maybe I should ask for help after all. Oh hey, it's Dad. As if on cue, my cell phone begins to vibrate with an incoming call. It's Dad. After a few rings, I pick up. His voice is cheerful and vibrant. Heroes, I thought it was about time for me to call. How is it? Do you like here in your home? Did you have any trouble getting here? It's not too far from the school, is it? I don't think that's how a dad should sound. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Dad. I haven't even seen the place yet. I just got off the bus a minute ago. Oh, right. Oh, whoops, I didn't know to get ahead of myself. My father laughs haughtily as he speaks. So how was the ride over there? All the fun and excitement? Uh, don't ask. You know how many creeps catch the bus? Not to mention the stale air and uncomfortable seats. Or worse, I couldn't even afford to doze off. Missing my stop would just be the disaster to top off this momentous occasion. Wow, sun was feeling gloomy. Suck it up, princess. A little bull's ride never hurt anyone. What happened to your enthusiasm from this morning? You were practically jumping for joy at the notion of moving out and attending school. You even changed into your uniform before leaving. You were crunching around like it was your first day of school. <laughs> I can't keep that voice up. I, I was not. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure it fit. You're still wearing it now, aren't you? I feel like the... The voice is getting worse. I looked out and looked down at my own body. My legs are clad in knee socks up to my thighs. I stop a couple of inches before reaching my short skirt, in which I have mixed feelings about wearing. The long sleeved blazer I'm wearing is warm and around my left. Okay, it is the school emblem. Below the blazer is a white shirt, also decorated with the school emblem. Finally, the collar of the white shirt is held in place by a tie neatly wrapping the whole outfit together. Uh, my precious daughter, I mean, Mer, my precious daughter is finally moving out in a room. It feels like this is the daughter that I was touching your diaper and noting your bedtime stories. Oh, what the fuck is this voice? Are you really going to be alright without me? Oh, please. I'm a grown woman now. Especially with a, a thyroid deficiency. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I sound like you in a way. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I can take care of myself. I'm not so sure about you, though. Make sure you eat properly and go to bed at a reasonable time, okay? Uh, girls! What the fuck? I smirk to myself at my father's childish reaction. And although he's a good responsible man, my father is not a serious person by nature. It's only when something big is going on that he seems to pull his act together. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Call me when you arrive at your new home, okay? I'll be around if you need- Uh, oh, wait a second. Actually, there is one thing I'd like your help with. I take a look around and detail my surroundings to my father. Mm, so that sounds like you got off one stop too early. Don't worry, your know, school isn't far away, just keep heading towards the hut of the city and you'll find it in no time. And if you still can't find it, 
Papa will track your phone's GPS and give you street by street directions. How does that sound? Creepy beyond compare. Thanks for the help though. I should be able to figure it out from here. Morat, don't hesitate to call if you get lost. I remember this one time where we went to the zoo and I found Ru- Beep! I hurriedly press the end call button. Honestly, every chance he gets. I put my phone away and start walking. This is gonna be a Yuri game. Following my father's directions, I soon find myself in front of my new high school. Lilium High School, a prestigious school inhabited primarily by the children of upper middle class families. Thanks to my exemplary performance and attitude, not to mention my participation in extracurricular ugh, curricular activities, I was given the opportunity to apply for a scholarship here. Not only was my application successful, but I'm now a top student at Lilim High. My battle hasn't ended yet, however, as a scholarship student, I must continue to excel lest my scholarship opportunity be revoked. Furthermore, I will be living by myself from now on, and I don't know anybody in the city. This is my first step towards adulthood, and as nervous as this whole situation makes me, I am without a doubt excited. Screech. Pulling me away from my thoughts, I turn my head back as the sound of a bus coming to a halt reaches my ears. Oh hey! Romantic love interest. As the door opens, only a single person steps off. It's a girl carrying a large ba bag on her back. Even from behind, her long black hair and pure white skin catches my eyes. She exudes an unmistakable air of maturity despite appearing to be around my age. A cool beauty with an appeal I find my eyes immediately drawn to. Ugh. It's gonna be this type of game, huh? But beyond her appearance, what I find most captivating is her demeanor. She takes confident strides, not at all unbalanced by the large bag she's carrying. She appears strong, yet her arms and legs are not muscular. Her figure is lean and her back is straight. She pushes her chest out naturally and walks with excellent posture. Why the hell would you notice all of that? Within that few seconds, you know, my age or not, she is un undoubtedly more mature and adult than I am. As I stare at her figure, my mouth agape, I no notice just how loudly my heart is beating. Oh, so beautiful. Mere sight of this girl causes my body to malfunction. My throat is paralyzed, my face is hot, and my heart is beating so quickly I fear it may burst. Yes? Eep! My heart jumps as the beautiful young woman addresses me. She stares straight into my eyes, exuding confidence and strength I could only dream of possessing. If you don't want anything, then... The young woman turns around and begins to walk off. Uh, 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 no! A police, wait! Hmm? My body reacts before my brain is able to formulate a plan. I don't mean to call out to the girl, but before I know it, I'm unconsciously reaching forward. I, uh, I, um... Yeah? The girl raises an eyebrow at my sudden outburst. I think about what I can say and why I called out to this total stranger. Perhaps I can ask if she's also a student. As I mentally as access, assess my options, I became painfully aware of the girl's increasing annoyance. No, it's nothing. Sorry. Hmm. Without saying a word, the young woman turns around once again, this time walking away for real. There goes your chance. Simply watching her beautiful figure recede from my sight causes my chest to tighten in a manner I've never experienced before. Once she's gone, my chest suddenly relaxes and I'm able to breathe once more. But before I can think too deeply about this unfamiliar feeling, our meeting comes to an end. Just who was that girl? Like I said, potential love interest. Following a lengthy walk, mostly thanks to my unfamiliarity with the area, I finally arrive at my new home. It's an apartment in the city not too far away from my new school. Most of the students at Lilium High use the student dorms but I unfortunately missed out on any vacancies this year. So for the time being, at least until the dorm room opens up, I will be living in an apartment rented by my father. This apartment looks pretty good. Uh, come to think of it. This doesn't look like a single person apartment. I pull out my cell phone out once more and call my father. Hey, it's me again. I don't want to do his voice. Hi, me again. I'm dad. Dots. I'm hanging up. Ah, uh, hold on. Don't go. I sigh and put my ear up to the phone once again. Anyway, I was just calling to say that I've arrived at the apartment. 
Hmm, it took her this long to get there. Who really should exercise more? Beep. I glare at the phone as I hang up. Honestly, why do I even bother? I thought moving out would mean being free of my father's nonsense. My phone begins to vibrate just as I go to put it down. I sigh once more and answer the call. Dad, I've only just arrived. If you want to pester me, can you wait until- Hold on, hold on. There's something important I need to tell you. Don't go out after 9pm? No? Well, yes. But something else. I was planning on telling you before you left, but you just looked so cute dancing around in your new uniform that I- uh, Out of it, Dad. Okay, okay. The thing is, you won't be living alone after all. Huh? I stare at my phone in surprise, completely baffled by my father's revelation. Well, what do you mean I won't be living alone? You promised that you would trust me to take care of myself. Besides, you work too far away. You can't be seriously be thinking of staying with me. My father doesn't respond immediately. Hmm. Iris, I think you're misunderstanding something here. What I'm trying to tell you is you'll be sharing the apartment with another Lilium High School student. My eyes slowly open wider as my father's words sink in. I had anticipated a quiet life of solitude during my stay here. A life of school, studying, and not much else. Having a housemate would undeniably change that. Uh, another high school student? Sorry, I know you were looking forward to living alone. No, no, that's okay. I'm just surprised. I don't actually think that having a housemate would be a bad thing. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. It'd be in a difficult situation if you refused to leave her for her. Ugh. I mean, don't worry about her having an impact on your studies. Zoe usually keeps her herself. Zoe, huh? Okay, so a girl calling Zoe will be living with me and attending the same school as I am. I can work with that. Huh, is there anything else I should know before we meet? Oh, I suppose there is one more thing. You can hear the sound of my father scratching his face as he hesitates to answer. You see, you and Zoe already, um, have a connection. A connection? I think back over the people I've met. While I can't recall the names of everyone I've been introduced to, I'm fairly certain I don't know anyone called Zoe. Yes, although you've never met, the two of you already share a close bond. How the fuck does that work? Uh, okay. So what is this connection or bond or whatever? My father once again begins to scratch his face. Uh, Iris, so is, is... <clears throat> my long lost sister? She's your little sister, my long lost little sister. My little what? I respond in a flat tone, half convinced that my father is just screwing with me. Hmm, I guess I should explain. Zoe has lived overseas for most of her life with her mother, so the two of you had never had the chance to meet. Which might be for the best, now that I think about it, Zoe can be a bit... Let me guess, it's that girl with the long ass black hair. Uh, my father trails off, unsure how to best end such a leading statement. Well, at any rate, a fresh start might be just what each of you need. Okay, talk to you later. Honey, lots of love. Bye bye bye. Beep. Huh? I stare at the phone in my hand. The call ends before I can ask a single question of my father who is no longer on the line. All I can hear is the sound of my own breathing. Uh, little sister, you've got to be kidding me. I lived my entire life thinking and being told that I was an only child. Furthermore, my father raised me alone and never really told me about my mother. I grew up thinking my mother was dead or perhaps the dead beat who ran out on us. Are you kidding me? You never asked him? And he never told you? Oh fuck, what the fuck is this situation? <sighs> In reality, it appears that she was living overseas with a little sister I never knew I had. Unbelievable. I've had a little sister all this time and never even knew it. Now out of nowhere, we're going to be living together. This is just too much. Holy crap, this is one big ass apartment. How rich are you? Dude, this could house at least six people. Five people. Following the piece of news my father had left me at the last minute, I was left in a state of shock. In a daze, I decided to take a quick look around the apartment. Oh my fucking lord, this place is so fucking big, how the hell do you even afford this? I locate the bathroom, my bedroom, confirm the state of my belongings. Finally sit back and take it all in. As hard as it is to believe, this is my new home, an apartment rented by my father, but still mine. Your father has connections if he's gonna able to get you this kind of shit. 
before I can settle down and relax, there is another matter weighing on my mind. The other piece of news my father dropped on me at the last minute is... What the fuck I missed? I mean, I advanced, uh, by accident. A little sister. For the next 30 minutes, I paced back and forth. Over and over again, I passed by the boxes containing my belongings. I need to lower down the... Okay. I then enter every room in the house, one by one, before returning to the kitchen. I repeat this process as time slowly passes me by as though waiting for something, or trying to reach a conclusion. In reality, however, I have no clear goal. There is only a single thought on my mind and pacing will not make it go away. As one might expect from the moment my father nonchalantly made his declaration my thoughts belong to a single person. Who the fuck is this woman? My little sister. Though surprised after a while I'm not actually disappointed, and I'm certainly not angry. Instead all I can think about is how I'll finally have the younger sibling I always wanted. But maybe I should lay down for a bit. I really do need to rest. Contrary to the advice I offer myself, I continue to pace. The excitement of having a little sister, one with whom I will soon be spending every day, is just too much to keep bottled up inside. <laughs> a little sister. My very own little sister. Oh boy, she's taller than you. I begin to imagine what she might look like and what we could do with one another. Cook together, school. Will she need my help with her schoolwork? Definitely gonna be a reliable older sister. I'll make certain that she knows I can be counted on. Come to think of it, how old is Zoe? My father said she was younger than me, but he didn't exactly say. Ding dong. Uh-huh, my excited yet nervous pacing comes to a halt. <sighs> As I hear a sound at the door. I'm not expecting any visitors and Zoe is the only roommate I've been told about. In my mind, I'm wondering if my doorbell can be only one person. I ready myself to give her the best greeting that I can. Zoe! I rush to the front door and throw it open without a pause or hesitation. Here it comes! How much do you guys want to bet that this, this person is going to be that black chick that we saw? I'm going to give you three, two, one. Ha! Ha! Got it! <laughs> uh, and she's taller than you. Nice piercings though. The moment I do, I see a familiar face staring back at me, blankly. Z Zoe, that's my name. You're Iris, right? Y yeah, that's right. I shrink back and lower my voice. In front of me is this beautiful young woman whom I met earlier today. The cool beauty whom I thought to be my age, if not older. My little sister Zoe. She looks way mature, mu much more mature than you. Cool, looks like I got the right place. Zoe pushes past me without another word. Wow, you're a bitch, Zoe. She drops her large bag on the floor and places her hands on her lower back, stretching after carrying it around for so long. It's just us here. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, um, yes, it's just us. Awesome, lock the door, will you? I want to take a look at my room. Oh, um. Zoe opens her bag and takes out a change of clothes. She then takes a quick look around, searching for the bedroom. I do have my own room, right? Dots. Oi, I'm talking to you. Do I have a room or not? I look down at my feet as I brace myself. <sighs> I've spent the past half an hour thinking about this moment, wondering what I would do, or what I would say. But yes, it's down the hall on the right. A hall? Zoe doesn't give a response, instead picking up her bag once bags once more. Wow. This is... Ah, this is top class bitch here. So before Zoe can end our first meeting as sisters, I force myself to speak. So Zoe, do, do you, um, hmm? Do you want to go get smoothies together? Ah, uh, where the hell did that come from? Uh, I just, uh, look, I don't know what our father told you, but I'm just here to eat and sleep, got it. So go make yourself useful in an unpack or something. I'll find a bedroom myself. Wow. Wow. Zoe heads down the hallway and checks a few rooms. She soon finds her room and enters, closing the door behind her. Dots. Even after Zoe has left my sight, I continue to look towards the bedroom. Uh, smoothies? What the hell? Hey, I, I think it was pretty good. 
I would have asked her if she wanted some pizza for tonight. Standing in the hallway, I continued to replay that unbelievably awkward exchange in my head. What just happened? The girl from the park. That was Zoe? My little sister whose existence I only just learned about pushed straight past me without any indication whatsoever that she even wanted to know me. Furthermore, Zoe's younger than me and yet she's so tall and looks so mature for her age. In a way, it almost feels like I'm the one who should be her little sister. <laughs> exactly! Suffice to say, this is definitely not how I pictured my first day of independence. Thoughts. I feel so weird just leaving our first encounter off on that note. But what should I do though? Go for it. I can't just leave it on that weird note and go to Zoe's door. door. Bitch! Calm the fuck out! From outside, I can't hear the sound of anything moving, so I give the door a timid knock. Thoughts. Maybe she's taking a nap, I don't know. Huh, no response, maybe she didn't hear me the first time. I knock the door again, this time more firmly. Still no response, but she must be in there. She can't already be napping, can she? Get the fuck out of here or I am kicking you out of this house. I should check on her just to make sure she's alright. Hey Zoe? Dots. Silence, this is getting weird. What could have happened? I have a responsibility to make sure she's okay, right? I cautiously turn the knob and slowly push open the door. Um, Zoe? Uh, Iris, is that you? I open the door and see Zoe sitting up in her bed. Maybe try knocking next time, yeah? Uh, I'm sorry, I actually did try knocking but you didn't respond. Oh, huh. I had my headphones on so I guess I didn't hear. Oh, so that's it. Sorry, I got worried when I knocked and you didn't respond, so I thought I'd pick through the door to make sure you were okay. I didn't mean to invade your privacy. Anyway, what did you want? Huh? You knocked on my door for a reason, right? What do you want? No, oh, I was just making sure you didn't need any help, like unpacking or anything, really. Nah, I'm good. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I wanted to know. Okay. Now this is so awkward. I slapped up though. Your room is pretty big. Damn, your room is bigger than mine. No, it's about the same, actually. Hmm, yeah, it's about the same. Zoe grabs her headphones and begins putting them on. Crap, maybe I should say something. Zoe, huh? I'm glad we're living together. I know that we don't really know each other and I hope it isn't weird for me to say this, but I hope we get to spend time together. You know, since we're sisters and roommates. And sorry I was so awkward before. Huh? You know, in the hall. I actually just learned a few hours ago that I even had a little sister. Dots. Zoe doesn't answer, instead opting to slide her headphones on again. Apparently, I'm dismissed. You know, this is gonna be a problem. I think you need to set some rules here. Probably bitch slap her a couple of times and then just tell her that she's being a bitch. Anyway. Leaves Zoe's room, close the door, I lean against the wall of the hallway and begin taking deep breaths. Why am I so anxious? No, I shouldn't take it personally. She's probably just really tired from traveling. She did come out from town, so she probably just needs some alone time to rest. Oh my god. How, 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 like, how fucked up is this situation anyway? I shouldn't judge Zoe's personality off of a few short interactions, I'll probably have a chance to spend more time with her tomorrow. With that, I begin preparations for sleep. Alright. Beep beep beep. Groggly, I wake up the next morning when my alarm goes off at 7. I hit the snooze button several times and doze until finally hauling myself out of bed. Uh, oh, yawn. I go to the bathroom to get washed up and notice that one of the towels hanging there is already wet. Apparently, Zoe already got her morning shower. By the time I emerge, emerge from the bathroom, Zoe is nowhere to be seen in the apartment. Zoe! No answer. Dots. After what happened yesterday, I'm not sure whether to feel disappointed or relieved. A little bit of both, maybe. As I expected, homeroom on the first day is introductions and going over the school's conduct handbook. Wow! You literally went from your your home to your school within one line. Yet, you explained so much about the goddamn girl. After homeroom, my next class is calculus. Uh, hate calculus. 
sits right next door and I'm one of the first students to arrive. I take a seat near the door. Hi, nice to meet you again. Hi, Iris. The students trickle in one by one and I say hello to the classmates I already know, offering a friendly nod to the new faces. And this bitch again. My eyes widen as I realize it's Zoe. She pokes her head around the corner of the doorframe as if unsure as to whether she's found the correct room, and steps through after confirming the number. Hi Zoe. Huh? I'm so glad you came by to see me. What are you talking about? That That is why you're here, right? To say hello to your sister? Dots. I don't mean to hold you up, you should get to your next class. This is my class. You're taking calculus, but I thought you were a second year student. This is the class that assessment test placed me into. Wow, really? Zoe shrugs and walks into the room, scanning for an open seat. I pull out the chair next to me. I guess she's pretty smart? You can sit, sit here, beside me. Instead of the sitting in the sit seat I pulled out of, Zoe walks right past me and takes a seat at the other end of the room. Why, why do you have to be so unfriendly? Why? I just want to be friends. Siblings, you know? She looks directly away from me towards the windows. Well, did Iris just get stood up? Oh, shut the fuck up, man. Embarrassing, though she looks like a really plain girl. If I were that girl, I might sit, sit somewhere else too. <laughs> that's so mean. Well, wow. Your life is a mess. But it's true. I hear the murmurs of students around me, reacting to my interaction with Zoe and blood rushes to my face. Looking down shamefully, I clench my hands in my lap. Oh, why did I have to let my guard down like that? I'm thankful that the teacher finally calls the class to order. Quiet, everyone. I have no intention of allowing the group classroom structure to devolve into social hour. We will be having a side seating. The classroom's collective groan heats my ears. Everyone, get up and find your used seats. I look at the seating chart and suddenly realize that the new arrangement has put my seat right next to Zoe's. I locate my seat and Zoe plops herself down next to me. Bitch, I don't like you anymore. But I didn't like you from the beginning, but uh, whose idea of a cruel joke is this? No, I can't be like that. Let's make an effort at least. I turn my head to smile at Zoe. Let she avoid eye contact with me instead looking towards the front of the room with a perpetually bored expression on her face. What should I do now? Go for it. Hey Zoe? No response. I, I think it's really cool that you managed to place into calculus as a second year student. It must mean you're really smart and dedicated to your studies. Do you like math? Thoughts. Uh, um, again, no reaction. Huh. Uh, open my net notebook. Apparently, Zoe intends to ignore me for the rest of the class. I try to focus on the teacher's lesson, but I can't stop thinking about this hot girl beside me. That is apparently my sister. She's sitting right next to me, yet she seems comple completely oblivious to my existence. And not only do I have to spend the rest of the semester sitting next to her in calculus class, but we're living together in the same apartment. What have I gotten myself into? After a long day at school, I gradually make my way home. What I'm going to do, however, will, well, be a mystery to all you viewers out there because that's all the time I got for now. Yeah. Well, first off, my review for the game. Pretty good story, pretty good art. The music is solemnly calm. I had a, quite a good time, uh, you know, uh, reading. I just felt that, um, as visual novels are usually are, they are very spread out, you know, the dialogue are very heavily detailed on um, some, well, I wouldn't say minuscule, but sometimes if you're gonna explain a girl that you just met, someone that you like in like a, with 1000 words, I just feel that it's hard on me, you know, to, to talk and then I'm like, oh my fucking god, just go on already and then you don't explain anything about it you and your travel to school and you just apparently just transitioned to school in that one sentence so yeah it seems that the visual novel is actually concentrated between these two people uh never really explaining the surroundings much except for the base story and the context or whatever yeah but however good 
Uh, it's a good visual novel. I like it. And yeah. <clears throat> However, this, um, like I say with all visual novels, this will be a Vero reads rather than a Vero looks at. So, if I have to explain again, doing a full uh, let's play of a visual novel will be far too long. And, you know, it'll be really hard on my fucking voice if I'm gonna have to do that dad voice every single fucking time he calls. And you get the point. So, thanks everyone for watching. Let me know what you peeps feel about this visual novel. I appreciate the feedback. Also, check the annotations at the end of the video for more games or visual novels that I've played before. And I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever I make. Stay frosty, y'all.